Welcome to Bag Buzz. Today we are going to be talking about how to care for your Chanel bags. Tips and tricks you may not have known on how you could be ruining your Chanel bag or um, decreasing the value of your Chanel bag or just how to properly care for your um, Chanel bag because Chanel has so many different leathers. Chanel has so many different styles that um, it's really hard to keep up with how do I care for these kind of investment bags. These bags are not cheap and this is why this video is for you if you want to know how to care for your investment bag because if you're going to be spending $10,000 on a bag, of course what I want for you is that your bag maintains its value, you're able to resell it down the road um, for more than what you paid because that is what a lot of people have seen with Chanel. Chanel is one of those brands that never go on sale when it comes to their designer bags, especially their classic flaps, and their bags constantly go up in value. So if you know how to care for your um, Chanel bag, I guarantee you it is going to be such a great investment. So if you want to learn all about caring for your Chanel bag, then you'll want to watch this video. Starting off is the Chanel Boy Bag. So the Chanel Boy Bag, a lot of um, problems I see with the Chanel Boy Bag is when the top of this boy bag becomes deformed and flattened. And why that happens is because of how you're picking up your boy bag. So when it's on the table like this, what you don't wanna do is you don't really wanna grab it from the top and squish it at, from the top. Just try to grab it from the chains because that's what's going to maintain that round puffy structure of your Chanel boy bag um, and it's going to increase the resale value if down the road you want to sell it. So just be careful not to grab it and squish it at the top. Um, what's also going to um, affect the Chanel boy bag is you see those creasings on the side right here that is due to of course having the bag under your arm when you wear it kind of on your shoulder like this and squishing it down against your arm. I know this boy bag seems very high maintenance. It's like, what? I can't even wear it under my shoulder. You can, it's just keep in mind that especially lambskin, it's gonna be much easier to deform. And how you can prevent that is just get yourself, insert um, a base shaper. So that is gonna help keep some structure inside and especially if you don't fill up your bags um, fully um, you know loaded then that's something you want to invest in because that's gonna help like if you have it under your arm and you kind of squish it it's not gonna get fully squished because it has kind of that um, that help inside of the bag right so that is something with the boy bag and then another problem I often see often which this bag doesn't have is major creasing normally happens on the boy bag right here and it's almost like this permanent wrinkle that you might see on your boy bags if you have boy bags let me know if you see it in the comments if you have this problem and what why that happens is because of how far you're opening up your boy bag. I know, I know. You guys are probably considering not even buying a boy bag, but I'm telling you, the boy bag is such a versatile bag. I love it, I recommend it. It's just about knowing um, if you really want to care for your Chanel bag. Remember, um, at the end of the day, use it, love it, but if you want to be more careful with your boy bags, let me show you the problem. It is when you open the boy bag all the way extended like this. And what that does is, it's creating that really big crease that happens. And I know you can't really see that right now, but that is how that permanent crease happens. It's when you extend your flap way too far back. So it's fine if you wanna open it like this just to get what you need inside of it. But when you start extending it all the way back, to, um, that's when you're gonna get that permanent crease. And you don't want that because once you have that permanent crease and wrinkle, it's almost impossible to restore it. So unless you're replacing the leather. Um, whereas press marks, that's what I'm gonna get into next, is with a lot of lambskin Chanel bags, you're gonna see some press marks from the chain. And this is from improper storage, improper, um, you know, wherever you place the chain, because sometimes people put their bags in a box and then leave their chain just hanging on top and that's what's going to create that dimple in your lambskin bags or sometimes you will see it in calfskin caviar and 
Um, that's why it's really important to store your chains properly when it comes to the Chanel bag um, because if you get those dimples, if you massage it out right away and you catch it, it is easily, you can pop it back out. Um, I will show you in another video how to kind of massage out those dimples and those press marks, but um, how you prevent that is just by making sure your chains are stored properly. So don't let your bags sit on the chain. Don't let your bags, um, you know, if you're shipping it to, um, to get sold or something, what you want to make sure is like, are the chains securely wrapped or tucked into the bag so that they're, they're not um, creating dents on your bags during transit, right? So that is with the boy bag. The next bag I'm going to talk about that has a lot of, um, that I've seen a lot of defects on is the classic flap. So I'm going to show you this one. And you'll look at the sides right there and you can kind of see, do you see that the bag is kind of like leaning forward? It's like, it, the base is no longer straight and the whole bag is kind of just, tilt it forward permanently so I wish I could have I had a table right here to kind of show you guys but it doesn't sit up perfectly straight as it as this one let me show you the difference actually this one has a way better structure on the side here as you can see the, the base is very flat and then it's it's more vertical whereas the one that I'm, sh I'm showing you right now is you did not buy it like this but what happened is how you store it on the shelves. So if you put the, if you like to display your bags on the shelves, um, which a lot of people do, there's nothing wrong with that, but it's the weight of these chains that are causing it. So if you put all your chains forward like this and it sits on your shelf for a long period of time, gravity is gonna do its work. Gravity is pulling this chain, heavy chain forward and bringing that whole front flap forward and that is what's causing this bag to lean permanently forward and this is really hard to restore in the future so how you can fix this problem is when you are storing your bags on display on a shelf forward or um, I mean just standing up what you want to do is you can evenly distribute the chain or just tuck in the chains inside the bag um, I know there is also felt wraps that you can um, put your chains, you know, some like tuck them like this and then felt wrap it so it's sitting up like that um, just to evenly, evenly distribute that kind of weight. But that's how you're gonna prevent your bag from being lopsided. And it happens to bags that even face backwards. So if you see a bag that kind of leans back, um, it's because it was probably stored with the chains to its back and then now it just has this permanent lean back. Um, so that's how you want to prevent um, your bag from uh, not losing its structure. And then another thing about the classic flap that I always see and how you can prevent is going back to this ML. This is a medium large and it is this zipper right here causing this permanent dent press mark on this interior flap. So I know you might not care if, um, because it's inside and no one sees it, but it does affect the resale value a lot um, because people who are spending $10,000 on bags, they want a pristine bag, they want a flawless bag, right? So how you can prevent that, and this is not due to just wear and tear, it's actually just because of the how Chanel crafted this bag and um, this zipper right here when you close it it's of course going to be pressed against that flap and how you want to prevent that is well, during storage and it's not realistic because when you wear it you're not going to want to put a felt or a tissue there to separate that but when during storage that's the most important part is just taking like wish I had kind of like a felt or a tissue here to kind of show you but just putting that felt in between that flap during storage that's going to really help prevent that permanent dent and mark inside. So that's another tip that you can do when it comes to your classic flaps. And then you'll see kind of with this classic flap, it has that, that, that permanent crease that I was talking about um, on the boy bag right here. Hoping you guys can see that through the cameras. But when I, and that's just due to overextending and opening the flap, right? What you don't wanna do is just overextend that flap even though I know it seems inevitable but it's much it's 
it's much more common in lambskin bags and that's why lambskin is definitely more high maintenance but it looks so luxurious soft and has that beautiful sheen so that is with classic flaps and boy bags another tip when it comes to caring for your chanel patent bags is do not do not put your patent bags exposed to sunlight for a very long period of time and the reason why is because patent it's this chemical that has this coating on top and if you display this on your shelves and it's constantly um, exposed to sunlight it is going to discolor your bag no, um, God. let me know if you guys have experienced this there I wish Chanel gives you this like care booklet manual for every one of their bags because the only way we knew about this is through the mistakes we made and and what clients have told us right so um, exposing your patent leather bags to sunlight for a long period of time is going to discolor your bag you're going to see you know uh, sun damage you're going to see just a discoloration overall um, so try to always put your patent bags in its dust bag um, or don't expose it in front of light for a long period of time um, another thing with patent bags especially light colored and dark colors is don't put a light color patent bag next to any dark colored bags because it will and I don't know how I don't know what science is behind it but it lifts the color from another bag so if you put this pretend this bag was like a beige or a baby pink patent bag and you put it next to this black pigmented bag you're going to see if, if it was touching for a long period of time it somehow absorbed some of that pigment and you're going to see marks on it and it seeps underneath the plastic coating somehow because spas do not restore that i couldn't find a spa that restores patent leather bags um let me know in the comments below if you guys have but that is a huge issue because then you just ruined your beautiful patent leather bags and i know a lot of people don't like patent leather but i personally love it because it it's just another one of those types of bags that stand out um, so sometimes when you have a collection of lambskin bags you have some caviars for every day sometimes you just need a really shiny bag for an evening or something shocking right something bold and that's patent for you um, but yes patent is definitely high maintenance as well um, and that's just a tip how you can prevent that okay sorry about that guys our co-host Paloma uh, decided to join us um, and we are going to continue on with the tips on how to care for your Chanel bag. So hold up, what tips have we gone through so far? We went through a lot yeah. before you came. So boy bags, don't grab your boy bags from the top, don't overextend the flap, and grab don't... Your, grab your boy, but don't grab your boy bag, <laughs> you know? <laughs> <laughs> exactly okay can, can we take this seriously no <laughs> and then the classic flaps um, how to prevent the zipper indentation mm -hmm. is putting that felt in between during storage the Chanel jumbo how to prevent the bag from leaning forward or lean leaning back is um, making sure you store the chains properly so it prevents that and then patent bags they are high maintenance, mm -hmm. like you. Um, you. Don't expose them in the sun and don't put them next to dark colored bags because mm -hmm. they will pick up that transfer and no spa fixes it unless I ask the audience to tell us where yes. spas will fix that for us. Mm -hmm. um, and then I'm going to move on to this hobo bag. This is why the importance of investing into a good base shaper um, shapewear for your bag is because you don't want your bag to look like this yeah. like it is such a gorgeous Gabrielle bag but for it to permanently deform like this it doesn't even sit up anymore it's because invest in shapewear for your bag yeah I feel like if you're spending that much money on a bag what's a little bit more on mm. an insert or some kind of pillow for your bag there's companies that make specific size some more is my favorite yeah. mm -hmm. they custom so, make it for any of your bags and they're $50 or less yeah girl you're already dropping bands on the Chanel yeah. please <laughs> What's fifty dollars more? Spend that <laughs> money on because deformed structure you cannot restructure unless you're taking it to a crazy, um, not artisan but an altier. What's that word? Atelier. At atelier. 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 Yeah, the one that fixes, um, you know, leathers and they will insert things, but they're not original Chanel materials. So honestly, it's. It's worth it to invest into shapewear because it decreases the value of your bag. Like that Gabriel Hobo, 
it retailed for I think 7,500 Canadian dollars. So that's around yeah. 6,000 USD in stores. Now in this kind of condition, you're probably going to be lucky if you can resell it for around 3,500 Canadian or wow. 2,600 USD. Yeah, that's a big loss, right? Like what's the difference? You spend 50 bucks mm -hmm. on that organizer and you can, you know, recoup some of your investment mm -hmm. or you're pretty much losing half just because you didn't stuff your bag and shape it properly. Yeah, because like honestly, this bag doesn't have a lot of scuffs mm -hmm. or stains or anything like yeah. that. It's really, it's available for sale at Lux Jour right now, but it's going for 3,600 Canadian dollars, I believe. So that is kind of to show you, yeah, you can get a great deal on it. And if you just buy shapewear for it after, I mean, it will temporarily stand up while you're wearing it. But of course, at the end of the day, I know this affects the resale value. And we are all here about how to preserve investments, especially when you're dropping money on Chanel bags. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to let you go give some of your tips. Yes. So another thing that you need to be really careful about with your bags is using any lotions, hand sanitizers, or alcohol wipes. Um, so actually, we, we saw on one of our Facebook groups, the Hermes Facebook group, someone had an exotic Birkin, and they had lotion on their leg, and they touched their leg to the Birkin. Do you remember that? Yes. And it stained, like they had coconut oil or something like really greasy mm -hmm. on their leg, and it stained the whole bag and gave this huge oil stain, and there's no fixing that once it happens, right? You can't really... Yeah. Especially for exotic leathers, there's not much you can do if you get a really greasy stain. So things like lotions, um, the alcohol and hand sanitizer or alcohol wipes are going to damage that leather. It's going to dry it out. It can discolor it. So we never recommend, like even if you spill something on your bag, do not go in with the Lysol yeah. wipe. I know we all love to hand sanitize, you know, we love to stay clean, but you have to treat your bags like your baby. Um, and you know clean it super super mm -hmm. gentle because that alcohol is really gonna mess up the leather Especially patent bags leather bags any exotic bags. That is the last thing you want to be putting next to that really delicate um, You know crafted leather, right? Yeah, so if you guys don't follow Lux Bag Spa on Instagram, they have a photo of that $30,000 ostrich Birkin bag that has this permanent stain on it now and if you're going to restore it, you have to do pretty much a full color restoration, um, really lift out, clean that oil out, but it'll still have that stain. So you kind of have to mask it. So that's something we don't want to happen to your, imagine a $30,000 oh bag God. and who is going to buy it with that stain and to fix that exotic bag, um, just don't let it happen to you. Um, so always make sure when you're putting on heavy lotions on your skin, especially your hands, we always use hand creams um, and you just want to make sure it's dry it dry and it's absorbed into your skin before going to grab your really expensive bags mm -hmm. um, for sure and that actually reminds me of another tip about patent leather so I know I mean it's again patent leather if you bring this out when it's raining or you want to wipe it down with a cloth that is wet patent leather gets tacky and sticky mm. Um, it's a very mm -hmm. common mm -hmm. thing. Like we've, we've, we've seen, seen those bags, yes. yeah. And once it becomes that sticky, t um, um, sticky patent, and it always has a like squeak to it, and um, it almost has like a film on it. It or has something. like yeah. yeah. And ha why that happens is because when you expose it to, of course, different climate, but when it rains, acidity in the rain, it if it's left on your bag for a long period of time, it will damage oh it patent. starts to break it down yes. yeah and then like when you're wiping your patent bags with water don't let that water sit on your bag make sure it's completely dry and that's gonna ha that's gonna make sure your patent stays this this is so smooth and soft this one is not a, a tacky or sticky patent but you want to maintain your patent that way there's so much more care tips. I was telling, I was telling them that I wish Chanel had a actual care outline mm -hmm. when you buy a bag from them. Yeah, they have care booklets, but it doesn't they tell, don't really you, tell you much. No, they don't tell you the tips we're no. telling you here, and it, it's sad that we have to discover this. Yeah. Um, and usually there. you discover it because of a mistake someone has yeah, made along exactly. the way. So many bags had to be damaged in the process yes, to <laughs> us to know these care exactly. tips, right? So we just don't want you guys to be making the same mistakes because there's nothing more heart-wrenching than having your dream bag and making a little boo-boo when you're storing it or using it and damaging your bag. 
yeah so if you guys have some chanel care tips comment below let the community know we will definitely be doing a part two we'll do other brands as well and um let us know what you want to see next because i know there's way more care tips and care mistakes we have done um that we know but we're just this video is getting a little bit too long so we'll definitely do a second part but comment below some of your care tips maybe some experiences that you have had and we will see you in the next bag video